What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about six things, six things you need to have before you start your Seller Central account, okay? So you probably heard the horror stories before. If you get some of these details wrong, if you mess up on the application, it can cause a lot of problems. So I'm gonna break down the six things you need before you go ahead and register on Seller Central and get your account up and running. That way you're prepared, that way you have the best chance to succeed and you know exactly what you need before you even get started, okay? So this is a great one. If you're just getting started with the journey or say you're having troubles with your Seller Central account already, maybe you missed one of these steps so you can come back, watch this, figure it out what's going on and maybe problem solve it a little bit later. But again, if you have not set up your account yet, you need to watch this, make sure you know exactly exactly what to expect and what you need before you start your Seller Central account. Real quick, before we hop on my screen, I show you exactly what these six things are. I just wanna quickly introduce myself. My name is Cameron James. I've been selling Amazon over five years now. I've had multiple years of seven figures on Amazon. I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people get their Seller Central account up and running as well. So that's who I am if you wanna Keep up to date on everything Amazon related, FBA related, uh, in general and e-commerce, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below and I'll continue to make videos on subjects like this so you do not miss out. You don't make those little mistakes like I made and you can go ahead and get up and running a lot faster and everything like that. All right guys, so let's hop on my screen here and get going. All right, so in my screen here now, let's go over these six things one by one. Okay, I got little notes here uh, talking about each one and then I'm gonna go deeper in it myself. Uh, just because I didn't want to write it all out, I'll just show you on screen, uh, on camera, what exactly what I'm talking about here. And that way, you know uh, exactly my thoughts and, and how all this works, okay? Uh, so number one, you need ID or passport, okay? So Amazon looks at two things when you make an Seller Central account. One is your personal identification, okay? They want to make sure you're a real person, you're not a bot, anything like that. Even if you have a business, they still want to tie a person identity to that account, whether you have a business or not. Okay. Uh, so you need an ID, you need a passport here, or, you know, if you're coming from a different country here in the U S we use driver's license a lot. So that's kind of our ID. If you're in Canada, other places, you may have a, you know, a better form of ID for that country. Again, if Amazon will prompt you and, and tell you which ones they'll take there. Uh, so you'll need a scan or a high quality photo uh, of this ID or passport. Passport, just obviously a scan, needs to be color, everything like that to make sure you're good to go. Uh, ID, you need the front side scanned and the back side scanned, and then you'll upload those to Amazon, okay? So do not edit these these documents at all. So whether it's a JPEG, uh, you know, PDF, whatever it may be, do not edit this. Amazon will see this and actually just decline you regardless because they think you're just, they think it's funny business essentially. So even if you're cropping it to make it look better, they think it's potentially uh, some Photoshop going on, anything like this. And so you'll get in trouble with that. So make sure you're all set with that. Make sure you're all ready to go. Uh, when it comes to ID and passport, that one's the, the easy one there. So next, business legally created, okay? So I do suggest getting a business created, okay? You can do an individual account, meaning it's just based on your name. You don't have to have a business tied to the account. But if we're in this for the long run, if we're trying to, you know, get a business to, you know, 10K a month, 30K a month, you know, six figures a year, seven figures a year, you're going to want to set up a business. Okay. That way you have the accounting all squared away. You have that limited liability protection, hence the LLC right there. And you're all set up when it comes to that. Okay. So, you know, you can start with the individual and switch it over later, but if you're going to do this the right way, you're really serious about this business, which I hope you are. I suggest getting an LLC or your company, whatever country you come from, whatever your equivalent is there, get that LLC figured out or get that business formation figured out. Uh, if you know you're in the States, you need a corporation, a partnership, everything like that. Obviously you go ahead and make the one that's best for you in that circumstance. So if you're asking me, you know, Cameron, where do I get my LLC made or my business made here? Uh, so if you just form an LLC, just go to Google here, you're gonna have a ton of options. So in uh, Ink file here is a big one. Uh, Zen Business is a big one. Legal Zoom is probably the biggest here, which they can go ahead and fill out this stuff for you and uh, go ahead and take care of it for you. Uh, you can do it yourself in the state here. So if you you're in Texas, Tennessee, Idaho, wherever, just form an LLC in that state, and you can go ahead and get to the state, you know, .gov site there for you, and you're going to fill it out yourself. Which again. Some people don't like to do this. Some people think it's really easy. So that's up to you if you want to pay to get it done uh, for yourself. A lot of people, uh, including myself, all my business has been made through a registered agent. So uh, I use it through Wyoming. So my LLC is actually in Wyoming. This is nice for many reasons, which I'm not going to bore you with, but you know, privacy concerns, everything like that. Everything is, you know, really laid out right here. Uh, Delaware also has uh, a great LLC 
kind of bank of laws there. So Wyoming, Delaware are just more LLC friendly, more company friendly in general. Uh, this is a company I recommend for Delaware. But again, it's up to you. If, if you're in a friendly, you know, environment for businesses, you know, say like Texas or wherever it may be, it's probably better you just get it done in your home state. You cut out a lot of potential issues going down, you know, further down and, and the complications and everything like that when it comes to uh, getting set up with Amazon and just in business in general. But there's people in California or New York or New Jersey where you don't want to pay these huge, crazy fees uh, and get in trouble there. So that's how you do this for LLCs or other established business types. So if you're in Canada, anywhere else like that, just go find your equivalent, get that done. I'm sure there's tons of services out there uh, that do this for you here. Next is your EIN, okay? So, uh, or your country's equivalent, okay? So depending if you're in your Canada, I believe it's just a Canadian business number, <laughs> registration number, something like that. Uh, and you can sign up with Amazon using this, but uh, for most people getting an LLC here in the States, or say you're, you're from out, out of country and you need to get something set up here in the States, you're gonna need to get an EIN. So this is just the equivalent of a social security number for a business in the US. That way uh, they know exactly who you are, who your business is and everything like that, okay? So if we go right here and I just type an EIN uh, to Google here, uh, you can see the first organic site is the irs.gov site right here and you literally can apply online right now so once you get your business all figured out get your llc all set up you can go ahead and get your ein you're going to need this for your seller central account they're going to ask for this and it's going to be something that's required if you're going to put an llc on the account okay uh, so you can see right here uh, all the rules uh, of what's going down here this is it's a little weird it just operates during like nine to five or actually it's 7 a.m to 10 p.m uh, hours of operations here you can't do this if it's past that just if it's not working, this is why, uh, just to give you a little bit of an insight right there. So again, that's for businesses. The EIN number is like a social security number for that business. If you're doing it individually, you're gonna need your social security number to put on there instead, okay? So that's the difference there. And if, again, outside of the, uh, the US and you're trying to sell in the US, it depends. There's so many factors and variables, but most people will just get the LLC EIN right there. Uh, if you are in an approved country, which most countries nowadays are approved, uh, you literally will have the equivalent if it's, you know, individual, have your social security number for your country, whatever the, the comparison is there, right? Amazon will take that uh, for the account as well. Same thing with the business, right? So Canada is the easiest uh, example for me. Uh, you get the Canadian business registry number there. You go to apply, you use your Canadian business and you go ahead and use that number instead of EIN. Okay. So it's equivalent for all other countries as well. Obviously I don't have uh, time. I don't want to bore you with, you know, 15 uh, to 20 other countries there and their examples right there when it's all pretty much the same. So next, after we have that, we need a bank account. So Amazon, you know, will ask for all this information uh, when you go ahead and get signed up for your seller account, but you'll also need a bank account for you to connect with that seller central account, okay? So this is essentially how this works is Amazon, they're essentially just like a intermediate bank account for you. So people buy your products on Amazon, they're gonna have, you know, hold that funds for two weeks, say it's $100 worth of profits, and then Amazon will go ahead and put that into your bank account in a direct deposit form, okay? So they need a bank account to send these funds to, okay? So if you're individual, a personal bank account is fine, is okay here, but if you're a business, you need a business bank account. Yes, you can technically use the personal on a business account, but again, accounting, all that messiness, you don't want this and it's really hard to change a bank account later. You have to go through more verification process. You may need something else too to, to go through that, which I'll talk about what that looks like and it just gets more difficult as you go on. So we want, the minimal amount of hiccups as possible when working through Amazon. So if we can get our business bank account set up right away, so once we have our, our LLC, our EIN, or whatever business is, we can go ahead and get to a bank and get a business account set up. It's very easy, uh, extremely easy to just set up a, a appointment with your local bank or whatever. I'll show you some banks I like here too. Uh, a little bonus here, so you will need a bank statement or a credit card statement uh, for this, which again, we're talking about right here. So either you have a bank account or a credit card, uh, which again, going deeper on this here, but you will need a statement. So if you have 30 days of transactions on an account, this is a plus. So if it's a brand new business account, maybe get a debit card, go get gas for a month or whatever it may be, and then have a statement, which you'll need to upload to them, uh, have it with 30 days of transaction history. Uh, if you have a credit card, which we'll talk about here in a second, you can use that as well. Um, some also, some other ones we could use is wise.com, Payoneer, and Mercury, uh, which I'll talk about the examples here in a second. So I've actually pulled these up. So some of the bank accounts I use and what I recommend is one, Bank of America. So this is one of my favorites. 
uh, you know, don't use Wells Fargo. I've, I've gone through pains with them. That's just, again, a personal opinion. If you had good luck with Wells Fargo, great. But Bank of America and Chase are my two favorite banks to get business bank accounts set up. I had great experiences with both. I probably lean more to Chase right now, but most of my businesses are Bank of America just because I'm not, I'm not going to switch it over. It's too much work. Uh, so like I talked about earlier, Wise, Payoneer, and Mercury, what are those? So for this example, you can use a Wise account here and you can take money into this Wise account in USD, then transfer it to, you know, say you're in Europe, you can change it to Euros, uh, the Canadian, British pound, uh, everything like that. So we see Canadian dollar right here, and then you go ahead and get it transferred over. And then you can send that back to your, or your business bank account or just your bank account in general uh, in Canada, because now it's in Canadian dollars. Okay, so this is nice because if you're selling in multiple countries, different marketplaces, you go ahead and get that switched over. The rates are very, very uh, competitive uh, versus others. I know the banks are a lot more usually in Canada, just, just for this example in general, you can do a cross-border account uh, for certain banks can do this. So you have a US account and a Canadian account. And so you can kind of use that uh, back and forth. Payoneer is the same thing, just applies to different countries. You know, same thing as Wise that is. Uh, so you need to figure out which one's best for you. And then Mercury is actually a business bank account that you can use for only if you have a US LLC, you can get this set up even if you're not a citizen, uh, you know, in the United States, you can get this all set up. So those are three different ones you can use different options if you can't get to Bank of America or Chase uh, in the US if you're you know going to the US marketplace there. Obviously, different marketplaces, different uh, kind of rules there. Okay, so you need that, getting that figured out, get the statement all ready to go. Next thing you need uh, before you set up your Seller Central account is a credit card, okay? So not a debit card, but you're gonna need a credit card to put on the Seller Central account. This goes alongside the bank account, right? So you need a bank account and a credit card, not you know one or the other here. So. Uh, with a credit card, you can start with personal. So this is actually what I do, uh, you, whether you're doing individual or a business account, whatever it may be, I start with a personal. Why? Because it's very hard to get a business credit card right away, right? So say you just set up your LLC, say you just get your EIN and you just set up your business bank account. Well, most credit card companies, they're not gonna just give you a business credit card. So it takes a couple months to kind of get this thing figured out, uh, make sure that you have the credit for this, the business credit and everything like that. Uh, so I don't expect anybody and me, same thing here. So every time I set a new account, I use my personal credit card just to, to make sure I get my account up and running. And then two months later, I'll switch it over to my business credit card once I get that all figured out. So start with the personal here and then switch it over to a business credit card once you get that all figured out here. Okay, once again, not a debit card. Okay, so don't use a debit card. If they try to pull something from that credit card and it comes back in debit only, uh, you're gonna get your account flag taken down. Of course, they won't tell you what's going on. Uh, you'll just have a bunch of issues, everything like that. Okay. So all the horror stories out there, they're semi true because this is a very robotic process by Amazon. So if something, you know, it's all ones and zeros, right? So if you know, a one or a zero doesn't line up, they don't tell you what's going on. They just flag it, shut it down and that's it. You get no help, anything like that. So we've got to make sure we're all set here. You also have the, the ability to use a credit card statement. Uh, instead of a bank account statement. So you'll need one or the other. I always use bank account statements here. Again, with 30 days of transactions, you're gonna be all set. And when you have a, say, Bank of America or Chase or Wise or whatever, you can literally just get on there, download the PDF as is, the statement that is, and then upload that to Amazon. So that's what I do there. I'll give you a little bit of advice for the business credit cards. Uh, you can go ahead and find some great ones here. So American Express Blue Business Cash Card is pretty good here. Uh, I have the ink. Uh, business card right here. Uh, I use this because I get 3% back on marketing. I believe that's the right one. I've used the Capital One Spark as well. Uh, just don't get the ones with annual fees yet. They're usually not worth it. Um, you know, I've, I've gone back and forth between this, but I never get one with an annual fee just because it's, it, it, to me, it's just not worth it. Uh, you know, I'd rather just get one with 0% or zero annual fee, not worry about it. And then the cash back is usually good enough here. So a lot of them have rewards to so go through here, but uh, American Express, Chase and Capital Ones are kind of my favorite. I've never used Bank of America's one, or I know there's you know United and uh, US Bank here. I've never used those, but again, you can go in here and see their intro offers, see how that works, see what the cash back is, uh, and everything like that, okay? Next, utility bill. Okay, so this one is where people get confused quite a bit. Uh, so utility bill, you don't need right away. This is only if your account gets flagged or they're requiring additional information. First thing they'll ask for is a utility bill, okay? So if you don't have this yet, 
don't get hung up. I'd go ahead and apply for your account. And there's about a 40% chance probably that you won't need one in general. If they ask for additional information, even if you put everything in perfectly, they still flag a certain number of accounts anyways, just for, you know, random screenings, you know, just think of like it TSA, you know, you get pulled to the side for a random screening, whether it's random or not, it seems to be, and if you do everything correct about, you know, 50% of accounts get kind of pushed to the side and ask for additional information. Okay. So utility bill, don't let this hang you up right away if you don't have it, but something you should think about. So utility bill, you need something, whether it's gas, electric, internet, it can be some mobile phones, internet and mobile phones, they get a little, it's gonna be one of the bigger companies, uh, cable, uh, electricity, gas, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I repeated a few of those, but essentially the major ones you get to your home or to a business, okay? So what you need here for the utility bill, either it's on your personal name with your personal address you put in first, or it's all tied to the business. So in your business name with the business address, okay? So when they ask for the account details, like I said earlier, they're gonna tie to a personal identity. So that's when you put in your name, uh, put in your, your home address, and then they're gonna tie it to also a business, okay? So especially if you're doing a business account, they're gonna ask for both, right? So your business name and then your business address. The utility bill needs to match one of these, okay? Uh, and this is where most people get confused, but it needs to match one of these. Just be brainstorming if you don't know where to get one yet and uh, start thinking about how potentially, if you need one, how to get one of these for you, okay? So if needed, this comes after registration, they'll send you an email, everything like that. If you get confused more on the utility bill stuff, uh, go ahead and just type in Cameron James utility bill. I made a whole long video on this just because it is a, a more complicated subject. And anything else you need uh, for Amazon, whether it's, you know, setting your LLC up, going more in that details. I have pretty much videos on every single thing. Uh, so we can go deeper on the LLC stuff if you need that, uh, business bank account. So if we need to go deeper on that, I can't spell, but here I am made plenty of videos on this as well. Uh, that Pretty much a video for every part of this right here. Uh, EIN, e -I, -N, I also have a video on as well. Uh, so hopefully that really helps you guys out and you know exactly what you need before you set up your Seller Central account. Again, the more thought time we could put into this, the more preparation we can put in this, the less likely we have to go through the, the buzzsaw that is Amazon when it comes to uh, denials or uh, putting your registration on hold or red flagging or whatever it may be. Just because the more reason we give them uh, to do this, you know, the worse it is for us, the more likely it's gonna happen, obviously. And we just don't wanna go through that because it, it takes a lot of time. It can be a major, major headache, like I said, it's pretty much just computer responses with Amazon and it's not, <laughs> I've dealt with Amazon so many times and I'll tell you, it's one of the most frustrating things uh, a lot of time, but it's just the, the game we have to play to, to sell on this huge platform with millions of customers and, and get a business going and everything like that. So if this was helpful guys, make sure you subscribe, just, just, just give it a poke, a little poke, 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 uh, to make sure you guys stay up to date with everything new on Amazon FBA and, uh, get all my lessons, all my strategies, all my, the essentially avoid the mistakes that I've gone through that cost me a lot of time, a lot of money, everything like that. If you got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. If it was helpful, comment below to say, Hey Cam, nice work, bud. Great job. <laughs> that one's for my ego, but otherwise guys, we'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye.